Hey guys, my name's Sam and welcome to Prep Medic. In this week's video, we're gonna discuss regular gauze versus two different kinds of hemostatic gauze. So having a hemostatic agent such as combat gauze, quick clot, or Cellox rapid ribbon has been kind of a tactical intervention, but there is a lot of misinformation about this gauze, especially when it's compared to regular packing gauze. So in this week's video, I wanna go in depth a little bit on what these gauzes do, what their capabilities are, and what we've shown with peer reviewed research. Before I get too in depth into this video, this is not going to be a deep dive into literature. I'm not gonna be citing individual studies or really looking at what these studies found. I have kind of compiled all the data that I've found and matched those up with the recommendations for the Committee for Tactical Combat Casualty Care. Now, I will link some useful studies down below in the description, and I'll also leave a link to Deployed Medicine's website. That website has pretty much all the literature that goes in the, into the Committee for Tactical Combat Casualty Care's approval process for different interventions such as Cellox gauze and quick clot. So as many of you know, wound packing is a critical intervention for somebody that's bleeding heavily from a junctional site. So in this case, we're talking about the base of the neck, the armpit, and then the groin. Basically places where you cannot place a tourniquet. If you're interested in learning more about wound packing specifically or stop the bleed, I do have two videos going over both those topics in depth uh, that you can check out. I'll leave the card somewhere up here. Now, when we're talking about what we're packing the wound with, a lot of people have said that quick clot combat gauze or cell X gauze, we have to be using a hemostatic agent. And for the most part, I agree with that. These have long been the standard of care for bleeding control. However, these are often hyped up to be something they're not. And in a lot of situations, regular gauze that doesn't have any kind of hemostatic agent will get the job done. A lot of people don't know that both your quick clot combat gauze and your cellox gauze use different active ingredients to achieve clotting in the body. Your quick clot combat gauze uses a mineral called kaolin, which is a clay oftentimes found in lawn products as well as some skincare routines. The kaolin will actually activate factor 12 of your clotting cascade as it comes in contact with the wound. Your clotting cascade is a very complex series of steps that your body takes to achieve homeostasis. Your cellex gauze, on the other hand, uses a mineral or a material called chitosin, which is traditionally ground up crustacean shells put onto the gauze. They do have a synthetic version of this that they're using for the production of cellox gauze now, however. Now, cellox gauze works by cross-linking red blood cells to form a mucoadhesive barrier. A lot of the pathophysiology behind chitosin and why it promotes clotting is yet unknown, however. Obviously, your standard gauze does not carry any kind of material to promote clotting. This relies purely on pressure. And that is actually a trait that all three of these gauzes share is that they combine whatever ingredient they have with direct pressure to promote that clotting process. And we've really found that the direct pressure is what's making the biggest difference for patients. Now, there are some other uh, items on the market that you can buy. And I think the most common one and what I see in the comments a lot is people asking about the granular powders. While they did use those in the military and they were approved for a short period of time, what they found in the early generation powders is that they would cause an exothermic reaction and would actually burn patients relatively badly uh, when it was placed in the wound. They fixed that issue with a couple different products and it was no longer burning patients, but soldiers in the field were finding that on your really deep and narrow lacerations with arterial bleeding, it was really hard to get the powder all the way down into the wound to the wound site to actually stop the bleeding. And then if it was a very windy day, a lot of the powder would be blown out of the, out of the wound or out of the bag before they could even apply it, which is why we have gone to impregnated gauze with the material right on it. Now the literature that covers quick clot combat gauze and cellex gauze might surprise you. We have demonstrated without a shadow of a doubt that both of these impregnated gauzes will stop bleeding quicker than your standard gauze. However, there has yet to be any demonstration of quick clot combat gauze or cellex gauze actually lowering mortality or morbidity after the fact. Essentially, while these are stopping bleeding quicker, we are not showing that these are actually saving lives. There was one study done in the UK very recently that is heavily flawed 
that has shown that there is a hemostatic agent that has decreased mortality or morbidity, but it has yet to be repeated and a lot of the medical community refutes some of its findings based on how it was presented. Now, I recommend that people, if you can afford it, go out and get your quick clock combat gauze and your cellox gauze and follow the TCCC guidelines. That being said, both of these are relatively expensive in the $20 to $30 range. And while I would say that your life is probably worth, worth $20 to $30, that's not in the capability of everybody looking to build a kit. So if you can't afford these or if you're not uh, quite sold on them, you can go with a normal S-rolled gauze. Now you can't use tampons, you, I would probably recommend going against any kind of large weave fabric because you do need something that's relatively dense. But these gauzes are a lot cheaper. I believe this one's less than a dollar from North American Rescue's store. And it's just Z-fold gauze, you can open it up and pack it into a wound and it'll work relatively well. Like I said, there is still some controversy and there has not been huge studies done. A lot of the numbers are relatively limited. Obviously, it is kind of hard to evaluate the effectiveness of this gauze just in the nature of what it's treating. So in the future, I do fully expect, one, to be more products on the market that are doing more, and two, to have some demonstrated ability to save lives with these products. In the meantime, these remain the gold standard, and your Z-Fold, regular standard gauze, will work if that's all you have. Before I finish up this video, I want to address a couple quick myths when it comes to your hemostatic agents. The first myth I hear is that the trauma surgeon will absolutely hate you if you pack a wound with combat gauze or cellox. That's false. These gauzes have a line down the middle that's radio opaque. So when they go to image the patient, they will actually see the gauze in the body cavity and be able to remove it very quickly. Back when it was granules, that caused a little bit more of an issue for surgeons because they would have to evacuate the wound completely. And especially when it caused an exothermic reaction, there was obviously other damage they had to address. They couldn't just suture it up. So those did cause a problem. The new agents, the generation two and the generation three agents do not cause that problem. The second issue I hear about, and the last one I'm gonna to touch on, is that this is going to cause strokes. That is completely false. Uh, there was an issue very early on um, with some of the hemostatic agents causing some cere cerebral vascular accidents. But with these new generation ones, you don't have to worry about anything. These are not going to cause clots that carry to your brain or anything like that. Anytime you have massive bleeding or any massive trauma, you are at an increased risk of clotting. So that's not to say your patient will not experience a stroke of some kind or a showering of blood clots throughout the body, but it was not the hemostatic agent's fault. If you have any questions, guys, please leave them in the comments down below and I will see you next week.